Hi there, Chris from Totally EV, and today we're doing a video interview with Sonny Vu. He is the CEO of Arivo and indeed the creator of the Super Strata bike. It's the world's first fully customizable 3D printed bike or indeed e bike. Now, this interview is going to be jumping straight into it, so I'd like to thank Sonny for his time. And of course, if you've got any questions whatsoever, do ask me down in the comments below and I'll try to answer them to the best of my knowledge or indeed pass them on to Sonny. So without further ado, here is the interview. So um, yeah, no, so the, the actual first question that I wanted to ask was actually about you. So I, I've, I've researched you a bit and, and looked about, you know, looked about the company and obviously looked into your LinkedIn and things like that. But ultimately, who are you? Why do you want to do this? And why now specifically? Really, really awesome questions. Um, so uh, I'll, I'll give you hopefully not too long winded of an answer, but I've been an entrepreneur all my life. I, just, I, I dropped out of school to start my first company uh, that was based on a software invention that I had when I was doing my PhD at MIT. And it was uh, um, getting computers to understand language. Um, this is back in the late 90s when machine learning and natural language, language processing was still in its early days. Um, and it, was, it did okay. We sold the company to uh, a company called Ask Jeeves, which is the internet search engine. Mm -hmm. And the language technology behind Ask.com is basically what we're doing. Nice. So that's my first kind of startup and exit. And then I did a company called Agamatrix right after that, which did blood glucose meters and sensors for people with diabetes. Mm -hmm. um, and then we sold that technology to Sanofi, which is a big drug company in, in Europe. Uh, Europeans don't, Americans have never heard of Sanofi. <laughs> Just like Americans have never heard of Selfridges. Everyone, no, nobody on my team knew Selfridges. And I'm like, typical Americans, man. I'm like, don't you guys have passports and stuff? And I'm just kidding. No, our team's quite international, so they did actually know about it. But like most of my, my American friends never heard of it. And then my third company was a company called Misfit Technology, uh, Misfit Wearables, which is a tech company doing uh, the compete against Fitbit and all that stuff. And we sold that to Fossil Group, joined them. And um, over the last five years, just been investing in deep tech startups with a climate change kind of view or mm -hmm. viewpoint. Nice. And so we did that, uh, did about 30 investments uh, in connection with a number of uh, VCs. Um, and a lot of it was material science. We, did, we were pretty early in the food thing. So we were making investments in like the food, you know, some of the larger, and you, you may, I mean, most people know about these food companies now, but we we're doing those back in 2014. Mm -hmm. um, and now, uh, then when I ran across Arriba, I thought, man, this is incredible. So we decided to invest, and it turns out they were looking for a CEO. I'm like, wait, you know what? What a great excuse to kind of re-enter <laughs> and be in, be in an operator. I'm like, hello, you know? and then um, I was fortunate enough to get the job. So, you know, um, yeah, so here I am doing that. It's the most exciting company I've seen in across hundreds of companies we've looked at in the last five years. And um, mainly because of its ability to just affect so many industries. And I mean, basically, we can make things lighter. Yeah. That's it. I mean, I had a, I was, it took me a while to figure out what is it that we do, our core value proposition, that is, we can make things lighter, cheaper. Mm -hmm. uh, so making things light is takes cost money, and making things really light costs like exponentially more money. And so if we can just make that cheaper, then we win. Better fuel efficiency, bigger wind turbines, I don't know, like bigger payloads, you know, cooler bikes, you know, yeah. uh, so more energy efficiency. So that's that's really the goal. And and so, um, yeah, it's the most fun adventure that I've had. I mean, are we doing this because we need to pay the rent? Not really. It's because <laughs> we, you know, we had a big, it was a big exit at Misfit. It was 300 million bucks after three and a half years of hard work. But, uh, you know, so and we were primary founder. But the, uh, but this is worth you know, a lifetime of investment. So, so that's what we're doing. And the bike is just the first of, you know, we're going to do bikes. We're going to do, I don't know, baby strollers or drone parts. I don't know. There's a bunch of stuff we could be doing. And so we'll be thinking about it. This bike thing, it's, it's, it's probably pretty apparent from our campaign that we are not experts on bikes. Um, so we had to hire people who were, uh, we're increasing the hiring and getting people to, to help out more, but it, it's just more going to take time to, um, um, yeah, so, you know, we're increasing our expertise on bikes, you know, um, Which and, we'll, and, and part of why we're doing the crowdfunding thing is to get feedback, you know, when people say, we didn't think people, like, so most of the people we talk to don't ask about group sets, it's only the cyclists, mm -hmm. and okay, fine, we got to do, like, I didn't know what a group set was, you know, because <laughs> um, I grew up in the Midwest, we bought cheap $200 bikes, mm 
you know, uh, no one asks about group sets, you know. Um, but now we do know about it, and so we'll be making announcements about what group set we're going to have and, and what kind of upgrades you can have, you know. But that's not the point, you know. Yeah. Like we, part of it is it does feel like you know we're trying to sell anti gravity shoes, and people are asking what the shoelaces are. It's like, well, yeah, if you want gold plated ones, go buy them. Or, <laughs> Fine, we'll buy them for you. You know, um, so we're having fun with this, and we're having it's a big learning experience for all of us. Um, and we're learning. Hopefully, I think we're learning very quickly. So nice. And in terms of actually the material that you're going to be using, yep. Um, there's two questions on that. First of all, where are you sourcing your material from? And yep. the second part to the question is where are you manufacturing the bikes? And yep. therefore, when it comes to shipping, how are you going to deal with that? Awesome, awesome. Three, three awesome questions. Two of which I know I have great answers to, and the third one I don't. Um, uh, the materials we procure from uh, the carbon fiber uh, is from Hexcel right okay. now. It's the lead, one of the leading providers of carbon fiber in the world. Um, so they are uh, U.S. based. So the, the materials are bought in the U.S. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know where we get the polymer. I'm pretty sure we get it. it's U.S. based as well. It wouldn't make sense to do it elsewhere because. We actually have to make the, the filament ourselves mm -hmm. and so the material is basically a filament it's a carbon fiber and it's a pre-preg polymer filament right yeah, yeah. Uh, okay um, yeah. and then so it's in a big spindle and then we spit it out yeah. one fiber at a time well it's not one fiber each one is like twelve thousand, but the yeah. um and that's what we do and then so that is uh, us um components and whatnot are probably going to be from japan okay it's probably Shimano. I don't know. Um, we may change that. We're, we're still figuring it out, but it's going to be from a reputable place. It's not yeah. like we're going to, you know, and we're going to provide the best that we can there. Uh, the printing, we have printers in the US, Japan, and Vietnam. Okay, and cool. So um, the printers, the fabrication of the frames will happen wherever the frames are, where, wherever the printers are. 95% mm -hmm. uh, plus uh, percent of the frames will be fabricated in Vietnam at, because that's the largest facility we're going to have. 12 systems each uh, i'm sorry we're going to have up to 120 systems by the end of next year printing wow so we're going to be building it through and each system is, is larger than this room that i'm in hmm. significantly larger than this room but anyways well maybe it's the same size i don't know but it's it's about each so when imagine 120 of these in humming in one place it's the, it'll be the largest Massive, additive yeah. manufacturing facility for composites in the world by far oh. it's not even close and so, but you know, we'll still have machines. We have a bunch of, we're gonna have a machine, some machines in Japan and the US. And so maybe we'll make a few in the US just to make sure they work. And then for the Japanese customers, we may end up making some of them there just because they'll save us time. Because the cost is pretty similar. It's more of the finishing cost, right. the polishing and sanding, that's gonna cost a lot of money. That's So when we say it's precision, whatever, made by robots and then uh, handcraftedly loved by a, a you know a finisher. It's a, it is actually by a human. You can't yeah. get robots to do that right now. So there is a human and a so each one is actually handcrafted in that mm -hmm. regard. Now that said, um, so yeah, so it's ninety five percent in Vietnam. Uh, okay. Third question was shipping. Yeah. We're still trying to figure that out. Like, um, are we going to ship the bike as a whole? Uh, are we going to ship the bike as everything? But then you have to add your you know put the wheels on yourself. Yeah. So it'll probably be one of those two. Okay, and then I was actually going to say, in terms of that, that will presumably because you've got the manufacturing plants U.S., Vietnam, Japan. If you're going to be shipping out to, let's say, the U.K., um, presumably there'll be import costs which will be associated to yeah, that. That'll be all. Take, that'll be. Um, so that's so for the purposes of the Indiegogo campaign, our pre-launch um, users are. Uh, like other campaigns, like you know, Mate X or whatever, mm. um, people are taking care of VAT themselves. Yeah. Uh, now, when we are selling them on retail, like at Selfridges here, and it's forty nine ninety nine pounds, yeah. full retail price, that includes the VAT, obviously. Got it. Okay. Because I think that's the convention in Europe. In the US, we we show it without the and then you add it on bike. after yeah yeah so then now moving on to the bike itself um yep. so a little bit more about the bike so i had a few questions about that you had you had i, I think it was touched upon um from the guys at selfridges but it said um five hundred thousand combinations that you can potentially have and that's just because yeah. you can have just different components plugged no, 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 into no. in uh, no, no, no. so we don't count component ones as, as right okay uh, because that, that wouldn't be fair because everybody can say that Wow. <clears throat> um, it's actually 
So technically, in a sense, it would be almost like infinite in terms of uh, in terms of uh, the frames because it's basically you send in your shirt size and your pants and your mm -hmm. weight and your height. And I think there's a few parameters that you send in. And then we compute the frame size based on what you, so what what you how big you are and what what your writing style is. Right. Um, and so, the uh, so it's based on the the number of frames. So, it's kind of an odd thing. Like, well, how do you quantize the number of frames? You know, because mm -hmm. technically we can make it as small as for someone who's four feet seven. Wait, I don't know what centimeter is. Well, you four. guys do four feet, right? Yeah, four foot four foot seven. To, I think uh, that's yeah. the, the four, whether you're four seven or seven four. Yeah. In the list. We, we've actually been trying to track down Shaq because I want to build really <laughs> like him uh, to show that we can support a lot of weight and yeah. a really big guy. Yeah. Um, the bike will look kind of weird because the wheels will look small compared to him. Yeah. But we're but there's only you're limited on the kind of tires that you can use. So. Yeah. Um, anyway, so we're gonna do that. We're gonna have some fun with it. Uh, so, but we had to pick an arbitrary number of frames, like say 10 sizes, you know, and then mm -hmm. the number of forks, 10 different forks, uh, three different tires and wheels, um, the number of wheel designs. Mm -hmm. um, so we don't, uh, we have, we, we're gonna assume three different component sets uh, that will be available where you can, there's like gonna be like this, this is, uh, we haven't announced this yet, but mm -hmm. there's gonna be like a pre, there's gonna be a standard set. Yeah. Just gonna like, you know, whatever and then premium which will be respectable and then an overkill version <laughs> really expensive but basically we just pass on our cost to you if you if you want to spend three thousand dollars on components you can yeah right um and you know we don't make actually i think we do this more than that because we have to pay for the credit card processing fees but <laughs> the uh, and then colors obviously yeah. um and then handlebars so when you add all these combinations together and it ended up being like 518,000 or something like that. Wow. Okay. Yeah, in terms of that, actually, but, but, you... but it's not like, oh, you have this chain or that chain that increases and we don't, you like, just, okay. Not counting that. Yeah. And in, in terms of actually, what I was going to ask in terms of the frames and how they differ. So would they, would that actually drive up the cost? So I know that the whole point is the fact that it's 3d printed, it's custom made for you okay. essentially, but there's a lot of people that would say be like my my sort of height and my sort of weight. So like, for example, 70 kilograms around 178 centimeters. Would you have predefined batches already made for those people? Or is no, it no, literally per... Everyone is actually made. We, we just end, it's actually straightforward. You enter in the software parameters, yeah. you know, weight, height, arm. It's actually arm length and leg length. It's right. kind of a, an, an important, which makes sense, right? Mm. And then um, And then based on all that, uh, a frame is kind of made for you, you know. I mean, we may quantize to a, a, a finite number because no one's going to tell us that they're 176.3 millimeters. Yeah, yeah, no, of course, yeah. You know, it's going to be probably down to one centimeter increments or one, we might actually make it to one inch increments just to make it simple. Yeah. Um, I don't know. So now are we going to need... 80 different centimeter increments from 140 centimeter to 230 or stack is that the uh, uh 60s and 90 yeah. but do we really need 90 frame sizes yeah probably not you know we'll probably collapse it to like i don't know 10 or yeah. 20 no but it's going to definitely be the most incremented ever like no yeah. one will like if a big company says oh we're going for, we've got seven sizes now i'm like nothing <laughs> You know, and then what we're going to do is we, so we're intentionally going to try to, we're trying to find our dream is we can get Simone uh, Miles to do one and then Shaq to do one, just to <laughs> end it, you know, that's our, like, we're trying to get, the, I don't know if we'll, we'll get a hold of them, but, uh, and then it, it, it's like, if we can build for them, we can build for anybody. Yeah, that makes sense. That's brilliant. Okay. Um, and then, so I guess that, that somewhat answers my, my other question I had is like, why are you choosing to 3D print, which is just because of the fact that, well, you can customize it um, and then where you've manufactured. Um, now, in we, we can customize it on a mass basis where you really, we really don't have, I mean, it's, we've had bike shops ask us, can you send us some bikes? And we're like, well, how big are you? And yeah. like, what do you mean? Well, we don't really have any inventory. We're just going to print whatever. So that's the other thing is we can pass on those cost savings to people because right now people don't really believe our costs. They either think they're too high or too low. Like if you've never bought a nice bike, it's too high. Yeah. If you've bought a nice bike, they think it's too low and it's, and it's a scam. Hmm. It's because we don't have to deal with inventory costs. Yeah. 
ever. You know, we just print it and then, and we don't have to deal with uh, line setup costs. I mean, it costs a lot of money to set up a bike line. Yeah. And if once you set it up, that's it. That's all you're going to build for the next 18 months, you yeah. know? Um, and uh, you've got five sizes or seven or whatever it is, and that's it. You know, no changes. Um, for us, if we sell 2,830 bikes, uh, then we can just sell 2,830 bikes and then be done and then do baby rattles next. Yeah. It's, really, it's, a, it's, a, it's a 3D printing machine. It's not a line. Yeah. That makes sense. And actually, that's the thing that was actually going to lead me to my next question is, um, have you thought about looking at printing components for EVs? So Totally EV writes about electric vehicles. That obviously includes bikes, motorbikes as well, um, and also um, your cars and big trucks. Have you considered that? Have you been approached by manufacturers, OEMs for you to do that? So A bunch of the car makers, including some uh, famous ones. Mm -hmm. Uh, have come to us, and uh, I just wanted to show you the EV that we printed. So okay, someone cool. asked us, "Can you print an EV?" And we just sent them the picture. <laughs> so that's, I mean, and oh, you've been already working on it. No, no, we just got started when you told us. <laughs> uh, and they're like, "Well, how did you do that?" And we're like, "Well, you just print it up. You want yeah. a different one?" And we printed another one. Nice. So this was from industrial design right. to printed, painted. Uh, most of it is actually the painting, believe it or not. It's mm. Painting. Annoying type, like uh, so. Printed, paint, polished, painted, assembled, and tested in I think it was like four weeks or something like that. Amazing. So, um, so these are. I mean, it's a weird design, and the, the whole thing is one piece. By the way, that entire frame is one. It's one piece. Yeah, you can see the kind of uni, uni, uniformity there's, that there is towards the back. But yeah, there's no, there's no see. If you look at it, there's no glue. And yeah. Like, how do you do a composite without glue? Well, oh, this is a hub motor uh, oh. that we just bought. The funny thing is, the hub motor is really heavy. You know, it like destroyed the weight of the bike. But, and then we did a few things, like we did this one-sided fork, and people are like, "Why don't you do it too? Wouldn't it be stronger?" And we're like, "Yeah, yeah it would be, but we're carbon fiber. We don't need to do, yeah, you know, it's, a, it's plenty strong. And it's also one on the back, so, right. so yeah, carbon fiber, no problem, man. Uh, supports lots of weight." That's brilliant. That looks now, would good. we ever chip this? Probably not. We'd probably just go ahead and do a double stay, just because. Otherwise, it's kind of too much showboating. It's like, oh, it's, <laughs> we did one side stay because we could. It's like that's a stupid reason to do something. <laughs> and then I'll just. I think there's one more question I had. Oh yeah, so it's in terms of the batteries. So, I think mm -hmm. on the press release it said you'd have Samsung, LG, or Panasonic, or and or Panasonic. Is there any reason why all three are listed, or? We, yeah, all three are used because we don't know yet. We're okay. gonna get, try to get the best deal we can, but the point is we're gonna get the best stuff. You know, no point doing all this work and then shipping crappy batteries. Right, and um, it... so that's that's kind of one. And also, we said one twenty five watt hours, and yeah. some of the purists are like, "Do not put any batteries in my bike." Okay, and then the other folks are like, "One twenty five? That's nothing, man. I, I want a thousand watt hours." It's like, okay. Yeah. You've just obliterated the point of a carbon fiber bike. Yeah. So we're probably going to have an announcement later where we'll just like make different versions where all we have to do is make the, the bay a little bit larger. You yeah. know, if you really want to spend all this money on a carbon fiber bike and then load it down with 500 watt hours of battery, yeah. we'll do it. Sure. Just make a printer. I mean, just a fatter thing. Yeah. We intentionally did 125 watt hours just to kind of, it's like if you want that extra push. You've got it. Uh, yeah. But, yeah, but it's it's super light. Twenty four pounds is kind of where it's coming in there. Oh, that's brilliant. Yeah, I think that's well, all my that's all my questions. Yeah. So. Well, hey, thanks for your interest. You know, and uh, just stay tuned. You know, there's a lot kind of behind the scenes. Like we we were really focused on the Superstrata brand. Yeah. We don't talk about a Revo. It's not we're not hiding. It's just, you know we're highlighting the bike. But if you if anyone wants to know about the company behind it, like it's it's a pretty substantial um, enterprise. So brilliant. Well, I wish you the best of luck. Hopefully, be in touch soon, and um, right. and yeah, I look forward to actually seeing the bike in person next time I'm in, I'm in London. So, yeah. Very good. Well, it's great chatting with you. So there we have it. That's the end of the interview. I know it comes to somewhat abrupt end. It's due to my video recording. It just kind of chops off, and I know the video quality wasn't uh, good. But I will very much like to thank Sonny for actually taking time on the interview and indeed explaining his thoughts and in, indeed the design process and the manufacturing process. It's very intriguing. And for someone like myself, I'm just 
can't wait to get behind the bike itself and actually ride it around, at least in London or indeed the countryside. Now, if you've got any questions, as I said, do ask me down in the comments below. I'll do try and pass them on to Superstrata and of course, a Sony if he has the time to respond to those. And furthermore, if you do like this type of content, do give it a like, subscribe and favor and share as it'll always help the channel grow. All right, I've been Chris from Total EV. Take care and goodbye.